Roaring. Freight train. Deafening. And explosive. Words that personify what it's like to hear, feel, and sometimes taste the path of one of nature's mortal enemies. You can hear all the debris hitting first, and it just kept getting louder and louder and louder. And then your ears start popping, and you just hear all the destruction going on. Roar, right? And then all of a sudden, it just stopped. It took just 30 seconds to instantly change the lives of Sarah Beth and Kevin Harrison, along with their two young children, forever. Their entire home was wiped off the map. The only part left standing was their storm shelter. But yeah, it was just uh, devastating to see, you know, everything just completely destroyed and uh, your whole life kind of laid out there. But, uh, uh, but we were happy to be alive and uh, thankful that, you know, we were safe. The April 2011 tornado super outbreak across the Deep South was part of a three-day tornado outbreak that was one of the largest, deadliest, and most destructive tornado outbreaks in U.S. history. It killed more than 300 people, injuring nearly 2,800, and created more than $12 billion in damages, making it the costliest tornado outbreak in U.S. history as well. All told, there were 343 tornadoes over that three-day period, with 207 tornadoes on April 27th alone. Four of those tornadoes were EF-5s, the most deadly. The last decade has featured season after season of multiple tornado outbreaks. Just this year alone, there have been nearly 200 tornadoes on the ground and 12 people have been killed. And since St. Patrick's Day, there have been two large-scale tornado outbreaks in the southeast, with over 65 tornadoes in less than 10 days. So in a season of more tornadoes and more victims in their paths, experts across the country are venturing into the storms to figure out what makes you and your home most vulnerable. So we know there's a lot of wind and a lot of debris. And those, from an engineering standpoint, create really interesting load patterns on the house. And so the wind in particular uh, can start to pull the house apart. So it might pull the roof off or it might stretch the walls. And the idea is that it, it's starting to be pulled. And so we need to resist that pull in the building. So if you think about the building as a balloon, um, so it, it sort of has its own protective shell on the outside, or maybe an egg, I guess is a better analogy. As soon as part of that eggshell gets cracked, wind can rush inside the house. And if you imagine rushing a bunch of wind into a balloon or an egg, it's gonna put pressure on the house from the inside and it can start to push the roof off while the roof from the outside is being pulled off as well. And so it can double the loads on the roof and, and sometimes the walls. How do you prevent your home from becoming that cracked egg? Well, it starts by being tornado strong. We have a lot of customers when the wind blows, they want a tornado shelter immediately. During severe storm season, it's all hands on deck at Extreme Storm Shelters in Georgia. They make storm shelters that can weather EF5 winds up to 250 miles an hour. Their mission? To help tornado prone communities survive the worst that nature can deliver. It's not the it's not the, the the wind that causes the damage or causes um, uh, risk to life. It's the debris that goes through. I've seen pictures of, of pieces of pine straw stuck through a two by four. So you don't think about everything in a 250 mile an hour windstorm is it's, like, it's a projectile, it's a bullet. Those debris bullets are what drives Lucas Stewart and his team to build better, stronger, and more resilient storm shelters. The ingenuity behind these pods has to do with their shape. This one behind me is cylindrical. The thinking is when an EF5 tornado comes roaring down your neighborhood, the two by fours that often can be lofted in the air or other dangerous debris will ricochet right off this pod, keeping you and your family safe. As a matter of fact, we shot uh, two by fours at 120 miles an hour at them and they ricocheted off and uh, we passed that test with flying color. I think that there's an old wives tale out there that says that the only way that you can really 
secure yourself in a tornado is in a below ground model. Why? Because that's what people used to do, right? They would get in their basements or in their cellars or what have you. Um, but with the technology that we have today, there's no reason to try and get you, grandma, granddad, the kids, the dog, uh, all down this skinny little hole to try and get underground when uh, we have products like this. Harrington says the storm shelters are built with ballistic grade steel and have a special powder coating that's used instead of paint to make them more durable and last longer. It's important that a storm shelter has three touch points. That gives the debris three different spots it will hit outside the shelter before it could come inside and hit you. You have the outside, which has grating, then you have this piece here, and then the third piece here, or the third piece here uh, for any ricochet. Uh, so that, you know, the key here is while you're in here and it may be loud, uh, while you don't want to be hit by two by fours and you don't want to be hit by the big stuff, you also really don't want to be hit by even the little stuff. There is light at the end of the tunnel. 10 years later, the painful takeaways from the super outbreak are getting channeled into efforts to make the places we live better and safer. You know that your, you know, tornado prone area is all it takes is a conversation with you and your builder to say, hey, I want this in my house. I know about this. Can you tell me about the options? And a lot of the options are uh, more cost effective than you would think. We know how to build better. We're learning after each one of these events, each one of these very, very tragic events. Uh, we're doing the homework afterwards. We're investigating the failures. We're, we're digging into it to try to understand why these things are happening. Why do we keep seeing this destruction? Uh, and, and we're learning. We've learned a lot in these last 10 years. Access to higher resolution and more frequent radar data is getting faster and with crisper detail. But all of the tools in the toolbox and all of the sturdiest storm shelters and even the timely warnings from the National Weather Service and beyond just won't matter if you don't shut the door on the notion it can't happen to you because it can. On special assignment, I'm Chief Meteorologist Leslie Hudson for My Radar. Follow My Radar on social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.